big thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this video. More on them in a bit. How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today I'm going to be answering the age old question of how much money does it take to get a Mark IV Supra to a thousand rear wheel horsepower. Now mine is not there yet. My Supra, the motor is still not back. Should be back sometime next week. We had to order a few extra parts. But this had me thinking, everybody thinks it's super cheap and super easy to get a Supra to a thousand horsepower. And it can be if you do it half-assed or if you just wanna make it on a dyno once and call it quits. Like potentially can a stock bottom end 2JZ GTE make a thousand horsepower? People on Supra forums say all the time that mine dude, mine makes it, but how much do they actually beat on their car? How much do they actually drive it? What's the point of making a thousand horsepower on a dyno if you're not gonna go out there and use it? So today I compiled a parts list. Not all of this is what I own. In fact, a lot of it isn't what I own, but I compiled a parts list if you're trying to make your thousand horsepower Supra reliable this is what i would buy there are some cheaper alternatives depending on what part is what uh like for example i have a pretty expensive exhaust manifold on the list i don't have a, a pretty expensive exhaust manifold i probably have some cheap china shit that the shop tossed on when my car was originally 2jz gte swamped when this one fails i will definitely upgrade but for now i'm gonna see just how long this chinesium manifold will last so anyways before we get into that this video has a sponsor Take it away, Drew. This video is sponsored by AG1. AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health instead of just targeting one area. Foundational nutrition supplements raise our baseline health, nourishing the body, brain, and gut. Now you guys know when you're out working on cars, you're usually not eating the best, but for me, AG1 has become a nice daily routine that just helps give me the nourishment that I need to help my body maintain its health. Since I started drinking AG1, I noticed an increase in focus and energy along with decreased stress and better mood balance. That's not all it can do though. AG1 does help support your immune system along with that nutrient replenishment that we talked about earlier. And this is because AG1 consists of a lot of micronutrients that help nourish the body every day, all day. AG1 should become an effortless daily habit for you guys if you are serious about taking care of your health. Consistency is key here. One scoop or one travel pack a day, eight ounces of water is all you need to support your immune system and replenish the nourishments in your body. Really quickly, we'll mix up some AG1 for you, show you just how simple it is to include it into your daily routine. First things first, we'll need eight ounces of water and then one scoop on there tight one scoop of ag1 put the lid on get her nice and mixed up and now let's have some so right now guys click the link down below or go to drinkag1.com slash drew peacock to get started on your first purchase and receive a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 plus five travel packs. Thanks AG1 for sponsoring this video. Go shop now. All right, so right here, I have my list of just about how much I think it would cost to build a reliable 2JZ GTE that makes a thousand horsepower. Like I previously said, you could probably find some of these parts for cheaper, but on average, if you're looking to make some solid horsepower, this is probably what you're going to be spending. So let's start with the first and potentially the most expensive part, the bottom end. You can either A, toss in your own pistons and rods and just call it quits. However, I don't think that's going to be a super reliable thousand horsepower. So what I did for my vehicle is I bought a bottom end from Mazworks. This is not sponsored. I'm just telling you where I got my bottom end. And a built bottom end from Mazworks will cost you between six to $8,000, depending on how crazy you wanna go. I'm sure you can go even crazier and it'll cost more. But for a thousand horsepower, six to $8,000 for a built bottom end sounds about right. And this is just the bottom end. And you have to supply them with a core. I don't know if they'll do it without that. I'm sure other shops might, but you probably have a core fee and it's probably another thousand or two on top of that. So six to $8,000 built bottom end rated for 1,000 to 1,200 horsepower. I trust that a lot better than just me tossing them in myself. If you're equipped to do all that, you have the knowledge, you have the tools, go for it. You'll save yourself some money for sure. But if you're like me and you don't have a machine shop in your garage, 
six to eight thousand dollars is probably what you're going to be spending for a built bottom end like i said before you could probably gamble on that stock bottom end i mean mine held between seven and eight hundred horsepower for a few years and it's still not blown up so it could potentially do it i just wouldn't want to gamble with that no i wouldn't want to personally not me so now you have a built bottom end what are you going to do about your top end what are you going to do about your head you're probably going to want to port it Porting it will allow you to make more power and flow better with less boost. So porting it is a good idea, along with cams, valve springs, retainers, all of the fun stuff to get you to rev all the way up to eight to 9,000. And that stuff isn't cheap. For cams, you're looking at probably a thousand bucks. I literally just ordered my cams 10 minutes ago and they were 950 or something like that for some 272 cams. Uh, for your valve spring retainers, all that stuff, Throw on another few hundred bucks. I'm also rebuilding my head somewhat, so I'm, I got new valve seals and stuff like that. But uh, porting, another thousand or so. I haven't found a port shop yet for mine, so prices may vary. You could probably do it for cheaper. Again, you could probably do it for more expensive. But I'm gonna say a solid thousand bucks for a nice port and polish. And then you need head studs, you need a head gasket. Throw on another few hundred bucks from there. I'll throw in my receipts and all that stuff from what I spent. You can't have a built bottom end and a built head and not have solid ARP head studs. Now that you have this nice solid motor, what are you going to use to power the boost? What are you gonna use? My turbo is a 6870 and it's rated for up to 1100 rear wheel horsepower. Again, each dyno may vary. I'm expecting it to max out at around 950 on the dyno I'm gonna use, which would be closer to 1050 around there on a typical roller dyno. But the Precision 6870, that'll run you a good 2,600 bucks. I've had that turbo for a few years now and I actually stand by it. It's not, again, none, none of this shit's sponsored. I'm not sponsored by any of these guys. This is all bought with my own money and I vouch for that turbo. 6870, I love it. It's not too sluggish on spool time. It is a bigger turbo and it makes good power and it seems to handle the anti-lag pretty nice. So yeah, 6870, another 2,600 bucks. Now you have your spoolie snail. What are you gonna mount it to? You need an exhaust manifold. How much is an exhaust manifold, Drew? Exhaust manifolds for a really nice one, they can go up to like 2,500 bucks. The one I'm running is probably less than 500 bucks. If and That's probably about 500 bucks, if I had to guess. Um, but I think for a solid one, you're gonna wanna spend north of 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000 for a good exhaust manifold. Uh, probably something twin scroll to match up with your twin scroll turbo. Mine is not twin scroll. So I'm, I'm just waiting for it to crack. One little crack and that bitch is getting replaced. I forgot I could actually just show you mine. Um, I still have the turbo exhaust side on, but here's my exhaust manifold with the wastegate and the turbo and everything. Um, it does look like it has a CNC flange, which is nice, but eh, I mean, it's probably Chineseum. Where's my turbo? Oh, here's my turbo. Here's my precision right here. So yeah, had it for a few years now. Blades still look brand fucking new because guess what? I run a filter. So now you have your hot side. Let's start going through to your cold side. You're gonna need some sort of charge piping. Charge piping can vary depending on what materials you want to use. If you're just trying to get by, aluminum will do with some silicone and T-bolt clamps. You'll, you'll be good with that. That should work. Most people use that. If you wanna go crazy with vibrant clamps, you can do that as well. I'm not. I'm not spending that kind of money. Silicone will do. You could buy an intercooler kit, charge piping kit, I think they range one to two thousand dollars depending on your intercooler and your charge piping mine was fabbed up by my homie i want to say we spent probably 500 bucks a few hundred on parts a few hundred on labor getting it all together but again that's without an intercooler so we'll say 500 for charge pipes we'll say another 500 to a thousand for a good intercooler the intercooler i think i'm looking at is rated for a thousand and it's right around 500 I'll double check that, but they go they go high. Again, it's like any other car part out there. You could go overkill or you can get just what you need and you'll be fine. The intercooler I have right now is, is this? I think it's still attached to the car. It's still attached. I think that one's only rated for 800. So we're pretty much knocking on heaven's door with that one. It's not gonna last much longer at my power level. So I actually sold it to a subscriber, shout out to him. But yeah, we need a little bit of a bigger intercooler for me. So we need that extra extra high extra core thickness whatever it is so now you have your exhaust manifold your turbo it's blowing through your intercooler what is it going into intake manifolds are tricky uh there's a lot of cheap chinese knockoffs mine is a king's royale i think it's like 900 bucks thousand bucks and i've had it crack on me a couple times already they sell a cheaper version for 500 bucks and i don't think that that would last any longer obviously 
I've reinforced it since. I've taken it to a couple welders. They've reinforced it, and it's been solid. So we're going to full send it on this one. Uh, but we'll, we'll see if, if I blow the welds off of this one with more boost. So we'll just have to see. But a solid intake manifold is going to run you. I mean, I think the HyperTune one is like $2,500. Um, what, let me see what I wrote on my paper. On my paper, I wrote 1500 to 2500 2500 is definitely on the high end of that, but you'll probably never have any issues with it. And it probably comes with a fuel rail too that is designed for it. So, but yeah, 1500 to 2500 bucks for a solid intake manifold that's not gonna give you issues. Buy once, cry once. It is what it is. So right then and there, I mean, you have most of your parts to make a thousand horsepower, but you still don't. <laughs> there's, still, there's still a good amount of parts that a lot of people don't consider. We need fuel, okay? What are you gonna do? You need a new fuel hanger because your stock one is not going to hold two Hellcat pumps. So you need a new fuel hanger. That's gonna run you about five, 600, 700 bucks depending on which brand you go with. We'll just round up taxes and everything. We'll say 700 bucks for a solid fuel hanger, couple hundred bucks for pumps. Pumps are surprisingly cheap. They're like 125 a piece, I think. Um, and then you need injectors. Injectors, depending on what brand you're looking at, probably 1300 bucks, more or less. I'm not running that high of an injector. Mine are 2200 cc's and they're about, at least I think at my price, I paid seven, 750 for them but they're not really designed for E85. They are and they aren't. I run a little cleaner through them every once in a while just to make sure, but if you get like some IDs, then you'll be solid, solid. You're gonna pay more, but you'll be solid, solid. So fuel system plus injectors, we'll just sum that up, an extra 2,000 right there, just burn your money away, 2,000 more dollars. Now you have fuel though, which is good. You have fuel, you have your motor setup pretty much situated. You're pretty good, you're, you're looking pretty good. You, you've made a pretty crazy car so far. But what good is that when you can't put the, the power through the trans? What good is that? You can't put the power to the wheels. What good is that? It's no good. Sorry, it's no good. You're gonna need to spend another six to $8,000 for a solid trans. I have a T56 from Granis Racing and I love it. Um, my clutch was a little iffy at first. Again, it's not from him. He doesn't make it, so it's not like I'm like bashing him or anything like that, but the competition clutch was a little iffy. I think it was my tilt and throwout bearing. So I actually custom made a throwout bearing. I'll show you really quick. I actually custom made this. It's a throwout bearing from a Mustang that I had a fit a fitting welded on down there. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a little fitting. I had it welded on so it'll take the clutch line that came with the kit. And I've had no issues since then. I don't have to worry about bleeding. I don't have to worry about none of that. Um, pretty genius if you ask me, but nobody's asking me. So <laughs> you're going to need a trans. Um, their package comes with trans, drive shaft, typically a clutch too. Um, you get to select what power level and everything like that. But I believe for the kit I made, you're looking at probably six, you're looking at an additional $6,000 for that kit on top of the $2,000. So you're looking at $8,000. Let's just, let's just, I'll just show you the screenshot of the page. You're looking at $8,000, but this will be a reliable trans. And I know a lot of people swear by the V160 for Supras, but I'm, I'm not a, a hardcore believer in the V160. I think it'll hold power, but I think when you start having issues, you're screwed. So although the T56 is not Japanese and it's not, it's not authentic, if you wanted an authentic TT Supra, leave it stock. You're, you're obviously a little too neck deep right now. And then lastly, you're gonna need a diff and maybe some axles. I think I'm still on stock axles. Um, Toyota overbuilds everything that they do, so stock axles are plenty for now, but you're gonna need a diff. You're looking at, I don't know, I'll just throw one up on screen right here. Cha-ching, you're looking at some more money right there. And uh, yeah, then you can actually put the power through the drivetrain. You might not have wheels and tires yet, but we only said we're trying to make a reliable thousand horsepower. We didn't say we were trying to use a reliable thousand horsepower, so I'll leave out the little extra stuff like brakes, wheels and tires, all that fun stuff that nobody thinks about as well. Along with other stuff, like you're probably gonna want an upgraded radiator like that one over there. You're probably gonna want some upgraded coil packs. I'm still on stock ones. We'll see what they max out on. If you're new to my channel, what I'm doing with my Supra is I'm tossing in the built motor and I'm seeing where my weak points are and I'm upgrading from there. I'm not gonna start upgrading everything again until it breaks. So if I get to the dyno and my intake manifold blows up, that's next on the list. If I go back to the dyno and my exhaust manifold explodes, that's next. If I go and my intercooler, well, I'm already upgrading that, but let's say it doesn't handle the power right, I'm gonna upgrade that. So 
we'll see. I don't know if I'll need coil packs. I don't know if a thousand horsepower super would. You probably would. So I guess we'll cross that bridge when that bridge approaches. But yeah, I think the last thing you would really need is just some supporting mods for the motor. Upgraded oil pump is recommended. Uh, billet timing belt tensioner is uh, recommended as well. That'll run you another five, 600 bucks. You'll also need like a full exhaust, a down pipe and all that stuff, unless you just did a hood exit. Uh, so that's, that's kind of optional but a full exhaust, you're probably looking at another 1,500 to 2,000. So as you can see, it's not super cheap. It's definitely not as cheap as a lot of 12 year olds will have you think. You could theoretically just toss a single turbo on there, do fuel, do intercooler and do some stuff and make a lot of power on the stock block, kind of like how I was for a while, you know? I did single turbo, I did a, a light cam, did all the intercooler, did all the cooling mods, did all the supporting shit and it made 800 horsepower which was plenty to have fun with. Not every super needs a thousand horsepower. I might not even like my super when I turn it up. I might have them turn it back down because one issue I already have with my Mustang is traction. And I don't want to have that issue with this piece of shit either because it's not fun. Then instead of upgrading your, your motor and everything, you're looking at suspension and you're looking at Jesus Christ, I need a $5,000 suspension system just to put this power to the ground where I was having plenty of fun with five, 600 horsepower and it was reliable and it was solid and it was usable and it was entertaining. So I guess let this be a lesson. One, it's not super cheap. If you're looking to build a 2JZ or you're looking to swap a 2JZ into one of your shit boxes, like let's say you're like, oh look, I have a shit box Lexus. I'm gonna put a 2JZ in this thing and make a thousand horsepower. Just buy the fucking car <laughs> at that point. Just just buy a Mark III, buy an SC300. It'll be cheaper to toss it into that and um, you'll spend an extra, what, $3,000 for a, a shell of one of those cars and you won't be shit in your bed trying to swap a Jay-Z into something that isn't gonna work. I haven't even added up the total, so I don't know what this price that I'm looking at right here. I don't I don't know what it is, um, but I'm assuming it's a lot just based off of what I said. Maybe it's not, maybe it's actually reasonable. But this is also under the basis that you have, like I said, a platform to put it into or a motor already, because buying a bone stock 2J is like Four to six thousand dollars if not more i've seen prices as high as ten thousand dollars bone stock 2 jz gte not fun definitely not fun anyways guys let me know what you think is that a bit ridiculous to make that kind of power or is that kind of reasonable let me know down below anyways big thank you to ag1 for sponsoring this video guys click the link down below support the channel go get some ag1 anyways i might be live streaming later we'll see I do want to do the uh, wiring harness on this stuff. Oh, that's one thing I also forgot. You're going to need a wiring harness. Yeah, you're going to need some sort of wiring harness. So we'll just tack that in right here as well. But yeah, I want to extend my wiring harness that's underneath my, my wheel wells and stuff like that. So might be live streaming later, might not. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed. Subscribe. And until next video, peace.